Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. Oh, and there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Wow. It's over the bar. So welcome to the RTJ podcast, Roy O'Neill is my name, sitting in for Jackie Hurley. Um, a little bleary-eyed after Sting last night, we had a bit of crack over in Malahide Castle, it was good fun. Delighted to be joined by Michael Foley uh, from Sunday Times, current Westmeath manager Desi Dolan, current Roscommon manager Davy Burke, welcome one and all. Looking forward to an unbelievable weekend of Gaelic football again. But I want to start this morning, guys, I'll start with you, Desi. We've had John Cleary out there in the last few days just mentioning, you know, look, he's, he, they, by and large, people have been very, have been largely positive towards the new format, the new season, the new structures, etc. But it just feels it's a little too, too condensed and that it could do with more breathing space. Is that your sense of it? Yeah, um, absolutely. Ma- great games and lots of games as well. But in terms of there's one aspect or one key aspect in this, and I say that's player welfare, the players themselves, um, in terms of the volume of the work that they're doing, um, that the vital component that they're missing is the rest aspect of it. Because we played uh, in three, in four weeks, we played three games. So the ground was particularly hard this time of the year as well. So the volume and intensity of the game. Games, uh, the difference between championship and league football so like in league you're used to going on softer ground week after week maybe for three or four weeks in a row whereas the championship in terms of the intensity of the matches the length of the matches there all seems to be a bit more injury time in the summer matches as well the ground was particularly hard the intensity of games uh, we were picking up a fair few we were nursing players through games but also we picked up three games three players weren't available to us today we played Tyrone and equally Tyrone um, we're missing Darren McCurry on the day so I'd imagine at this point I feel I actually feel sorry for Tyrone insofar as they're out again this weekend and I just don't know how Brian Doher and Fergal Logan are going to keep their players fit and available Is that your sense of it as well Davey? Yeah it's very similar to that to be honest with you lads um, if you look at last weekend right uh, Damien Coma came off at half time Tony Smith came off after 32 minutes and Ben McCormick came out for half time. For me, if them three boys stay in the field, I think you've three different three different teams in your in your quarterfinals. So uh, it, it's the load, it's the load, it's player welfare, it's it's a killer. Now I don't think any of them teams can have anyone else to blame other than themselves for ending up in the round of 12. So that's that's another way of looking at it. That's not a GA issue. Like certainly from our point of view, we've no one to blame but ourselves that we're in the round of 12. And I'm sure Galway would say the same thing if they were here today. So so. Uh, but the, the load, the recovery, it's very, very tough week on week for these lads to get, get their bodies right to play seriously intense games. And even a few weeks ago ourselves and Desi would have played in a challenge game there with a mixture of squads and the pitch was completely burnt alive, like with blisters coming out our ears and just just mad stuff that uh, lads are getting literally no recovery whatsoever. So if their feet aren't burning off them, they're carrying a hamstring, they're carrying a soft tissue injury, you, you just can't win. So I, I just think we just need a week or two here or there thrown into it. And that, that's all we need. We don't need... In my opinion, we don't need another month or another four or five weeks. So I just think another week or so thrown in, and I think that would be a, a perfect system. I love the games. I know my lads love the games. We love going week on week or even every couple of weeks, and uh, it's very, very good and very enjoyable. Michael, after this weekend, there'll be four teams left in football and four teams left in hurling. Um, and we still have the whole of July and August. What's the rush? Fair question. Um... Like my own view, I, see my own view on that. Like if you're just mentioning the hurling there, like I can never see why why the hurling season is coupled with the football season anyhow. Like I mean, I don't get that. I think it's doing a disservice to hurling. I don't think it's helping that particular game to run it in parallel with the football at all at all. Um, I think there's ways around that, but that's probably for another day. Um, I think that the hurling should be shunted forward. The football, um, yeah, for the same. Look, I suppose it's it's it's. Obviously, the reason that you'll be given is that it's a split season and you want to give due, due time for club teams to get ready coming into the second half of the season and all that. And I'm not entirely averse to that. Like, I've no problem, I've no real problem with, with, with the All Ireland football final being on the 30th of July or the first weekend in August or whatever. I mean, it's been kind of discussed over the time that another week, as David mentioned there, probably wouldn't kill anybody, uh, even in terms of pushing the All Ireland final forward a wee bit. But even within that, like, and you know the lads are you know absolutely correct in what they say. Obviously, in terms of the in terms of the load on players, equally like you have a team like Cork who had like six weeks or something like that in the middle of the season 
to get themselves no sorted yeah. because they lost their first round. I mean, if you look at the teams, you know, it was always going to be, this season was always going to be about squads um, and just how these things work out. The two counties probably with the strongest squads are the two that have had the, I suppose, the, the longest, not the longest breaks, but like Dublin and Kerry haven't exactly been stretched, uh, you know, apart from, well, Kerry obviously against against Mayo below and Killarney was a, was a bad deal for them. But generally, if you look at who they've beaten to get to the point they are, you know, it's not that whole pile different to if they had gone through a qualifier route or whatever, you know. So it just works out that the teams with the strongest squads have had the probably the least attritional run to the quarterfinals as well, which is just one of those things. It's going to take, I think the thing about this system in general, and it's a, it's a GA thing anyway, there's always a fierce rush to be right or to be the one to say that, yeah. I told you it wouldn't work. Yeah. Or I told you it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. With a thing like this, everybody's flying blind. Yeah. You know, from the very beginning of the season, no one knows how it's going to work out. And we see now, like even coming into the last round of the group stages, people were going, three teams out of four, what a disaster. I mean, it's taken all the jeopardy out of it. I think what we see now, apart from Dublin and Kerry actually, is is wh- where one performance that goes awry in the group stages can completely screw your year. So the the concept from the GA perspective of every game having something on it has proven to be the case, mm-hmm. even if the public, maybe some managers and players are only catching up with that reality after it's happened. They'll know for next year now. Yeah. So it's going to take two seasons minimum to figure out how this thing works. Do we need more time blocked into it? Does it need to be stretched out? Um, but it was always going to be, a put, like for teams like Westmead, like West Common, teams with developing squads, it was always going to be a push like this year and managing the time. And uh, and I said, I mean, teams teams took gambles. I mean, Cork didn't. Obviously, Cork couldn't play Brian Hurley last weekend with the hamstring. But, you know, lots of other teams, you know, on the borderline, give it a go. You know, this, it's, it's, this could be death or glory. We have to go I, for it. I, I, I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's like developing teams. Like Galway were in the All-Ireland final last year and Comer was going off. Sean Kelly was played even though he was obviously injured. Like it, I think just it's, it's player welfare. And it just comes yeah. down to, it just comes down to the fact that there's too many games too quickly. And as Davey pointed out, you're not looking <laughs> for like, you know, this big, long, you know, drawn out kind of group thing where you've loads of time to recover and that. You're saying literally an extra week would give an opportunity for players because the players people forget have to go to work so the recovery is when they're trying to work and then they're preparing for another game so you're week on week so you're doing analysis you're trying to recover from the game you're doing analysis you might have a knock or niggle so you're literally trying to fit all that into a working week as well as everything else and you know god forbid have a little bit of a life as well in there somewhere so it just appears like just the volume of that for amateur players, for amateur players, this is the bit that people need to worry about, that they're amateurs. Yeah. Yeah. It just felt like, uh, even for me, I felt like I'm pushing lads too much and I'm sure Davey would agree. But even, I've never felt, this This might come across, but I've never felt a, a come down or whatever way you want to describe it like this week and I've lost loads of big games and I'll continue to lose loads of big games, I'm sure. But this has, Jesus, it's been it's been like a I've been in a car crash or something. The, the the intensity of what we have been doing for this whatever six seven months has been incredible, and uh, I've never experienced anything like it. And Jesus, to come down is unbelievable uh, right now for me. I don't know Desi whether you are similar or not, but it, 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 it's un like I've never experienced that. It's like it's like it's, it's been, I'm just taking over my body this week. I'm just wrecked. I, I just literally my body is different this week. It's it's very I've never experienced anything like it before. You know. Well, I think that's very interesting because that was actually what I was going to ask next before we get into the games, Desi, is, you know, you're in this sort of, uh, you're on this hamster wheel. It's a very sort of a small space. It's very intense. It runs for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then it just stops. Yeah. So like, so like, it's almost like a, a cold turkey scenario. And what, 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 what actually happens then? I mean, do all the players just go off their separate ways I'll see you all in October. I'll see you all in November. I'll see you all next January. I mean, what actually happens? Um, well, the first thing that happened in Westmead was the lads had around the club games. Uh, after all of that, the no lads way. had around the club games <laughs> oh, the following oh, weekend. God. Which is, well, I felt oh sorry God. for now, to be honest. Like, <laughs> Jesus. Just, so that oh. was the first thing. But like, obviously, we'll have to gather together at some point in the next 
some point in the next two or three weeks and just have a little review and a little chat. And if um if you're looking forward to next season, um is to identify some areas that lads need to improve on just because you as as you say, you don't have them then till next maybe November or that. Mm-hmm. Uh so they will need to some of some players need to to address a couple of issues in terms of development and things like that. Like that's showing up just like when you're knocking around the dress rooms at the, the, the top teams, like and you see the physical condition of the lads walking around the place. Like it, they are specimens now, intercounty players, and you see them walking into a coffee shop, and you just know straight away that he's an intercounty player. And that's yeah. the level of conditioning and the strength and condition that they're all doing. Like, and it's all of the teams. In fairness, it's across the board. Uh, the intercounty player nowadays has really developed into a fine animal. Yeah. Is the same for you, Davy, in terms of, you know, like, it, it, is it a break first and then maybe come back and gather gather the players up and try and formulate a plan ahead of 2024? Or what, what, uh, what's been the last couple of days like from that point, point of view? Yeah, well, it's definitely a break. Definitely a break. Yeah, I, I, I'd be a big believer in uh, putting the head down and getting away from it for for the short term. Anyway, just for everybody, players, management, the like, and then coming back in a couple of weeks and uh, review. Yeah, it's like same same thing. As I said we'll review the season, uh, get the commitments in place for next year, and you know, and and ultimately the key part is, is exactly what Desi mentioned. There, there's plenty of people who need work. You don't just turn into this physical specimen who's drinking his americano on a Tuesday and Costa coffee overnight. Now you need to be doing work and in the off season. <laughs> Davey, so, is that you or the players now? <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the wrong type of physical specimen, Desi. Um, um, so, 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 like, it, it, the work starts now. Obviously, you have to break now. A breeder, a mental breeder more than anything else, and physical. Also, the body's really getting back to the tone to do their bit. But, but there's extra work that have to be done in the off season to keep these lads in shape and to, as Desi said, make the developments that some of them need to do. We have a very young squad, so we absolutely need to develop some of these guys and keep them moving on plans. Um, that type of stuff but yeah ultimately that's it even there's more to it there's the medical side of things where injury checkups will be doing regular regular contact on that front and different things throughout the club championship so there will be plenty of contact it won't be just a case of uh, I'll see us in the 30th of October lads I'm sure we'll, we'll have a cut off next year like you know uh, I'm, I'm a big believer I don't like surprises lads so um um yeah I won't be hanging around looking for any any phone call in October and I'm saying I have a sore ankle or whatever you know yeah uh, thank listen we'll get into the games anyway guys and um I'm sure. Look, it'll be uh, it'll be it's it's a long it's a long summer and a long winter ahead for everybody, and it'll be it will be the case for another four teams after this weekend. And I was thinking we'd start chronologically, Michael, because no better buckle to give us context around the fixture of Kerry versus Tyrone than yourself having you know written a couple of books up around that neck of the woods from a Tyrone point of view, and it, like. I think of the four fixtures this weekend, and I know Dublin Mayo will grab most of the headlines. This is the one I'm really looking forward to the most. Yeah, I will look at it's got its own resonance, it's got its history. Um, and it's one of those it's you know, it's a relatively modern history as well. We're talking 20 years really, so it's still even though the teams are different and all the rest of it, and the personnel are different, and the game has changed. The history still feeds into it, you know. It feeds into it in the way that no matter how Tyrone are going, they'll always fancy uh, a crack at Kerry. And in the same way, no matter how Kerry are going, this match will be tormenting them this yeah. week. I mean, maybe not so much the players. I don't know. I mean, that's different. But just the public and the general the general conversation below there, they're tormented. I mean, it was the best <laughs> <laughs> they want anybody else like. But yeah. Uh, but equally, it's a great game for Bodrum because mm. it's it's the. It's funny you say that though, Michael. I heard Darren O'Sullivan, and he made a really interesting point. He was saying that, you know, for the general public in Kerry, a fixture versus Tyrone uh, kind of brings us at almost a voodoo type s- scenario for yeah. them. They're like, whereas for the players, he was kind of making a point like they were a bit, you know, it's just another game. Of course, because I mean, you know. They're in the group and, and you know, they're, you know, they're driving for an All-Ireland. They won't believe there's anybody, you know, that they cannot beat. And I mean, why and why why would Tyrone be any different from anybody else? It'd be a huge challenge. They'll give them all the respect in the world and they know what they know exactly what they're coming up against, but they'll fully believe that they can match them and go for it. Like, it's just the, uh, as I say, it's the general conversation around outside. It's what gives this game 
its vibe like and its atmosphere you know and i mean uh it just so happens again that you look at tyrone and you kind of think yeah they're starting to bring it together and the same questions even though we've had like i said before like we've had the group stages and all the rest of it you're still looking at Kerry and looking at the teams that they've beaten and the teams that they haven't. And you, there's there's a question, just where are they? That's why I'm yeah. saying I think it's a great game for both of them. It's, it's yeah. going to be a springboard. Whoever wins this is going to go flying into an All-Ireland semi-final, which is great. Uh, Desi, Tyrone do look like the that this is, you know, their the championship really kind of might rev up for them now. Uh, the fact that it's Kerry, they always seem to raise their game for Kerry. But lest we all forget... You know, they were a kick of a ball and a very, very close John Heslin free from you guys knocking him out of the championship. So, you know, what yeah. was your what was your impression of him that day? Um, ah, look, they're they have all the answers. Like the they're two years ago, they're all Ireland champions. Like so, there's pedigree all over the team. So you know that their quality, um, powerful midfield. Like I have to say that very experienced, good man markers as well. So they have lads that can pick up your likes of the Clifford McKiernan is an exceptional player. They've Hampsey there who's tough. You know, back to me, you know they kind of a lot of they've a lot of players that can nullify the threats. Like, but midfield they really are a powerful um unit there. Uh, Con Fitzpatrick and Kennedy. But then I suppose what we've seen is the emergence of Dara Canavan this year. Um, and in fairness to Dara. Rory's there as well, but like Dara just has the X factor. He's just he's been around a little bit longer in terms of the development, but his confidence is growing at intercounty level, and it, he's a very dangerous player in terms of, um, he's just so good at getting on the ball, so aware of the threat, um, and then his ability to kick points off left or right, um, is incredible. Like it, it's actually freakish for me because I played with Peter as well at the compromise rules, and he's such a clone of Peter. It's incredible. <laughs> And they're actually really nice lads as well, which makes it worse. They have that they have that Peter, they have that Peter charm. Like he's, <laughs> Peter is very charismatic and he's very witty and he's very yeah. good. And even my defenders after were saying the two lads were lovely. Like even though they were they were they were marking them as well, they're saying they're lovely lads. Like so. <laughs> um, but it just that's that that's the type of magic. But like the thing about uh, if you can think of Kerry, the Kerry lads have, um. They could always have answers for every team in the country, like in terms of in terms of playing football, playing tough, play whatever you want, we'll beat you effectively. And um, but the Tyrone lads went back in the early noughties, if you can remember the game where they totally ambushed them and were bullying them around Crow Park. I think the scars of that are run deep with the Kerry lads because the physicality that was brought about that day probably changed the way Kerry prepared their teams for the next 10 or 15 years because they knew they had to get into the gym and they had to get physical and they had to match that kind of intensity. Uh, so uh, in fairness to the Tyrone lads, I do believe um, their their confidence is good. I, there is something I just feel maybe, I, I don't know what it is, but I definitely do think since they won the All-Ireland, they've dropped a gear, dropped down a gear. Uh, beating Donegal, Given everything that's happened there as well, um, I don't, I don't think Donegal ever had their best year, so I don't know exactly where they're at, but they're very capable. They're you've on. seen, you've seen both teams up close and personal, obviously as well, Davy, uh, being in Division One, and particularly from a Kerry perspective, I actually thought that was a fantastic game in wintry conditions below in Chile that night, and I thought you should have won that game. I thought that was a penalty in the very, very last throw of the dice, and that would have been a very famous victory for you to go down to Chile and win and get a good and a deserved result. Where do you see Kerry right now? I yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. The one thing about all these games and the one thing about this championship is that anyone who tells you with certainty anything that's going to happen, I think, is is, is a long way <laughs> off the <laughs> off the ball. If this is wide open and week to week, no one has a clue what's going to happen. That's my take on it, and I think I know less and less every day. I'm at this crack now, so um, uh, that's that's the that's the first thing. But with Kerry, uh, earlier in the year when we played in that name, they were lacking pace big time, big time lacking pace. It was Gavin White's first night back in with them. I thought they felt I really felt they were missing Brian Begley. We were very very conscious just to this that they wouldn't have the strike runners really if we set up a certain way that they would struggle with it and they did struggle with it their midfield area you know they're probably lacking a bit of mobility really around there so you know I'm talking about for the very very top you're talking about the wind Sam Maguire here I'm talking you know and um, they're probably just lacking a little bit of mobility around the middle there and you know uh, they've Darren Moyne and they've Aegis Balland you know with all these guys but I'm not sure Jack Barry's this world not sure if they're the quickest over the ground you know so um, um, I think that's one area Kerry are definitely struggling with and we all know like Connor Myers and you know Sierra Conchal Patrick's and these lads are serious, serious athletes, like proper top level athletes. And 
will that cause this Kerry team problems? Absolutely, it will. But the one thing I see is I'm, I think the Tyrone form line is definitely you can you can you can there's holes in it. There's big time holes, and I'm I'm not like their game when they lost him on him in Ulster fair enough I'm not sure they came through the big all I don't as Desi said it only have had their best year you know Bally Buffet isn't the isn't the fortress it used to be up there so I, I wouldn't be fully convinced on Tyrone's form lines just yet and uh, one thing just to follow up on Derek Canavan I think they, now that he's found his own selfish streak he's become unmarkable nearly and that uh, he was too selfless and he was offloading every ball to this point, you know, up to last year maybe, and now that he's actually putting out, I think he's twenty-two or three scores kicked in championship this year, and um, a serious return, and now he's turning into real deal because he's actually going for the juggler himself. Whereas I mean, my my experience almost he was offloading every ball, which you're nearly happy enough as an opposition manager up to this point. But uh, so yeah, I, I I just I think there's too many holes in the Tyrone form uh, for them to be able to pick it up to beat this Kerry team right now. But I definitely think Kerry have lots of lots of questions to answer too. Like it's interesting there just when when Desi when you mentioned there just about all three because I think that's really really relevant actually to the whole the arc ever since yeah. and even now because yeah. like that time I remember well like that that all three game the all the talk like we are now if podcasts existed back then we'd have been talking about Moynihan versus Canavan that was the conversation and uh, these two brilliant attacking teams are going to go at it and it's going to be a spectacle you know and it I mean Tyrone. The point that I make anyway basically is that Tyrone are the proactive team in this relationship, really, because because Kerry have so much historical success, they generally just want things to stay the same and keep going, and they only react when they're when they're beaten, um, yeah. and that's still the case. Is. So so Tyrone go at them like they did in 03. Kerry reacted in a couple of years of follow. And the, like the question now really is like how are Kerry going to? Because I mean you've got particularly for me in midfield, you've got a scenario where. Like you mentioned there, like Tyrone are stronger, I think, at midfield. Most most teams that are left are stronger than Kerry midfield. So do will Jack and will Kerry go away and go short and try and, and just try to do different things to try and negate that? Um or will they will they go with whatever they want to do? Um, you know, and not be proactive is what I'm saying. Because mm. because again, it's kind of it's still, I think, down to Tyrone to set the agenda. On, on on Saturday, like if they don't, um, I'd agree with David. I think I think there's too many holes in the farm line, really, to be sure. Like, but you know, you'd be expecting that they'll be the ones setting the agenda on Saturday, maybe. Yeah, well, I suppose that, like that's the thing. I mean, two years ago, which I think ultimately resulted in Peter Keane being moved on as manager. Like people tend to forget the game was only lost by a single point after extra time, minus David Clifford. Now, obviously, Kerry had David Morn uh, at midfield that day, and he's a big loss. But Tyrone obviously also had Conor McKenna, who scored two goals, and he won't be there. So, look, I think uh, it's going to be very, very interesting, one to really, really look forward to. But we'll move on now to the Ulster Derby. And, again, two Division One teams, which, Davy you would have come up against over the course of the spring campaign. What's really interesting here, right, in relation to Armagh Monaghan, Armagh beat Monaghan comfortably enough, actually. I was look, had a look at it there last uh, two nights ago. Armagh beat Monaghan comfortably enough in the league. But, of course, who got relegated and who stayed up? <laughs> that, was, that, was the, that was the first round of the league. And That's plenty, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Plenty, yeah. Plenty, yeah. And it was tight little pitch in Castle Blaney, was it? Yeah. If I remember correctly. So, uh, I think I think Monaghan have learned from that. I don't think they'll be bringing them there next year or whenever. But, um, yeah, yeah, this is a very, very interesting one. Um, I, I'd say Monaghan will be delighted with this draw, to be honest, which I, I think they uh, I think they definitely would have would have eyed up Am I if they could get anybody. But um, I, I, I'm just, again, the, the form lines, are, you know, they're coming to very similar form lines to uh, to Tyrone, and I'm just not sure of, of how strong it is. We all love the Ulster Championship, and it's brilliantly competitive, and it looks brilliant on TV, and Clonus is class, the Athletic Grounds is class, but I'm not sure the quality in it and uh, how, how good these teams are this year. And, you know, it's hard to know with Donegal, the form seems to be Donegal, seems to be the central form here. And uh, I'm just not certain. Um, you know, You're a brave might... man, Davy, messing with the Ulster teams. That's all <laughs> <laughs> Off with you, Davy. Off with you. <laughs> we're, we're, we're knocked out, Desi. We're knocked out. <laughs> and then you have to meet them next year. <laughs> 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 so I, I'm, ju I'm just not certain how strong the form is this year for 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 that championship, and, and, and ultimately that's 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 why I would I would um I would think Armagh will have 
could have too much. And I do also think with a tight squad, if you would look at the Monon squad, they have a tight squad. And you'll see the same guys going out week, week after week. And they're on now week three in a row this weekend. And I'm mad they'd have to break them. I know none of us really know the answer to this. Did the break... Did the break, uh, is it beneficial or is it not beneficial? Uh, I can't see how it wouldn't be beneficial. Both me and Desi have given you first-hand experience of what it's like managing lads week to week. And I just think Armagh would have been in a lovely hotel last weekend with the feet up, managing loads, doing everything, and where Monaghan had to go to the well to beat Kildare, you know. And uh, I just think the likes of Carl O'Connell, like, brilliant. Like, what a season that fella's having. Like, he's top-class wing-back. Um, but okay, how at 35 and Darren Hughes and Kieran Hughes, how many times can they keep going there three weeks in a row with 20 degrees heat? That's the question. You know, momentum might be the other thing. Maybe they're flying. Maybe they will we'll, we'll go through. But again, like Mick said, this is going to take two years for us all to really understand how, how to go about this. Uh, you had a really good look at Arma. Very. Uh, by the way, Desi, what a campaign. You were so, so unlucky. Up in the athletic grounds, la- Go, go late on, you know, and it's so much better. Like when you say, I was unlucky. <laughs> I know it's, it, and it comes across as patronizing when yeah. I'm trying not to be. Yeah. Um. But listen, it was, you know, look. I mean, you were, you were really, you were very unlucky not to get a, not to get a, at least a result yeah. of some sort above in the athletic grounds. So what did you make of them that day? Um. Ah well, like sure. They're a great team, like they've great talent. I mean, you've Rian O'Neill up top, you've Grug and Stefan Campbell, you've players like that, like they have a lot of talent. Um, do you know, like Geezer or Karen McGinney, like he's uh, he's he's just he, I, I really enjoy him. I really think he's a fascinating. Are they a bit character. are they are they a bit hyper, Desi? Like, I mean, we this time last year they were in a quarter final. We all know what happened at full time. You know, they've had a couple of issues in terms ah, of lads getting sent off, you know, do like uh, are they over okay okay are they overly emotional <laughs> no well like like they're exactly a reflection of their manager like if you right. can remember Kieran McGinney playing like there was no holes barred it was like you just give and take and you just get on with his championship and whatever happens happens um he's built up a massive support base in Armagh as well so when you're playing Armagh you know that there's a different intensity to it in terms of you know there's going to be a good atmosphere in the game. Um, you know the players, the Armagh players are going to be right in it in terms of the quality. So the intensity of the game, the atmosphere of the game, um, the players don't disappoint. They've done well in the last couple of years. Um, they do blow hot and cold in terms of form. Some of them players I mentioned are very good one day and maybe not so good another day. So that's, that's where you look at it and go, we want to get them on their off day or get them to their off day as much as they can. But in terms of a team um, that give everything, like they're tough men as well, like they're physical. Uh, but like, I just can't, I really admire Monaghan and I just can't, I do scratch my head at how long they can keep going for and yeah. still achieve everything that they still do. And then when you look at the Carl O'Connell, the last play of the ball and diving on the ball and lying on the ball and you kind of go, well, there's a snapshot of why Monaghan year after year deliver that because that kind of intensity and that type of heart and hunger and all that kind of stuff you just can't put into lads it's either in them or it's not and Monon seem to have loads of lads with that kind of spurt um, and it's to be honest it's great it's great it's great to watch that kind of level of intensity but it's um I just I just find Monaghan as a team fascinating and I suppose Vinnie Curry's in there as the manager and it, it, he's one that has soldiered with all them boys so there's no lack of belief and no lack of desire. So it should be no, it should be a ding dong match as well. How just do you one, see it? One, one thing, just one thing on it. Hi, David. One thing. Um, I, I, I'm a phenomenal team for going back and keep coming back. Like the amount of kicks that team have got between the, the penalty shootout last year, the penalty shootout this year, relegated from Division One this year. Like on the fair play to McGinney and, and co, whatever they're doing with them, yeah. how to keep going back into that dressing room and getting them lads up for it again. And I don't think any of us would have expected them, but certainly I didn't go to Carrick and Shannon and beat Galway a couple of weeks ago. And off, up they went and, and they got the job done. They topped the group out of nowhere. So, in fact, like they're unbelievably resilient uh, and they must have huge character in the dressing room. Yeah, that's a very fair point. Mick, how do you yeah. see this game? Yeah, and they'll probably get their reward now this weekend for that win in Carrick, you know, that extra week is going to, I think, in this game. Yeah will make a fierce difference for all the reasons Davey mentioned. I mean, the, the the age profile of some of the players on the Monaghan team, it's a big, it's a big ass now. But I mean, going back to just what Daisy was mentioned there about, about Monaghan, I mean, they are made, we're going, you're probably going back now 15, 16 plus years in terms of this culture of players not stepping away until they have to be carried out in their shield practically. They just, they've developed a culture there and they've developed an environment where guys just want to be there. They want to be around, which is, which is whether it's club or county, that's all you ever want is to create an environment where lads want to be. 
and Monaghan have, have succeeded in that and are still getting enough out of fellas. Vinny Curry has done a, a fine job this year. I mean, when you look at the amount of different ways he's set his team up for different games, you know, again, operating off of what people would consider a limited squad, like he's, he's they've, they've done really well, but you know, the form has been kind of up and down and like, you know, they nicked one up, you know, they got they got Tyrone, then they got a hammering off Derry, then they changed things up to kind of stifle Derry in the groups, then they, you know, they lost to Donegal um, and then they came back. So it's kind of up and down, squeeze Pascal there. It's up and down and it's kind of going into Co Park now say, with a fairly, fairly intense few weeks behind them. It might be a bridge too far, but again, it's what the lads are saying there. It's that kind of, you just don't know what our man, you know. I think it's what's held me off of them a little bit. It's just that kind of you can see the personnel is there, everything yeah, yeah. is there for them, yeah. but just at the crunch moments, at the key moments where they need to step up a level, maybe they don't step up a level. So I'm not sure that's the question being asked them this week or this weekend. It might be the next round if they get to the semi final. That could be where they come a cropper, but um. I think they'll be okay this weekend. And 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 no semi final appearance for Armagh since two thousand and five. So um, uh, an unbelievable opportunity for them. But we'll move on, guys. I'm not really going to get into predictions. By the way, predictions and stats are the two things that bug me. Um, <laughs> so so I don't go near them. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, I'm not going getting into that. But we're going to get on to the biggest game of the weekend, Mick. Right? <laughs> ex, ex, extra trains put on by Irish Rail. Who would have believed it for the Cork footballers? So yeah. looking forward to this one, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. You will know the hurlers are gone. And uh, <laughs> the Cork yeah. public reckon the yeah. Cork public reckon there's only one trip to Dublin this summer. But yeah. um, I know it's great. And I mean, look, uh, it was something to see. I mean, I wasn't, I was, I was at the hurling last weekend, but just listening on the radio on the way up to Limerick and uh, just the just the, the the crowd that was there would be very un Cork football like, really, you know. And um, but look, they've pinned four good performances back to back now. Um, and the, I suppose the most significant thing about those is that they've put themselves in a situation in all the games where they are there down the stretch to have a shot at winning, which may not have been the case before. What was impressive for me uh, against Roscommon was it was really they were really in a difficult situation, and I, I mean I would have. Ex- I would have fancied Roscommon to win last weekend on the basis of the situation that Roscommon put them in last week and whether they could figure a way out. Like when they played Clare earlier on in the season, they were in a similar scenario where they just couldn't work their way out of it. They couldn't figure out what to do. And and Clare should have won that game by more. Last weekend, um, they did find a way out. Now, you know, there was some some fairly from very stressful moments coming down the stretch for them this time around, like, you know, but they did figure it out and they toughed it out in the end and they got the win. It's going to stand enormously to them. Um, I think the uh, we mentioned there before just about about um, you know attrition and and players and 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 injuries coming into it. The thing like I think I think last weekend was the first time um, since the Clare game. I could be wrong, but certainly in the groups, if you include the previous three games, it's the, it was the first time that Cork were actually outscored in the last ten minutes by the opposition. Um, so that's that's probably a result of Brian Hurley not being fit and them having to start Stephen Sherlock and not getting the bounce off the, the kick off the bench maybe that they might have got previously. So, you know, that'll all come into play now again this time if Hurley can't make it. But um look, they are, you know, it might sound it might sound a bit cliche, but they really are in in, in bonus territory now. I mean, Derry will be the favourites. Derry will be devastated if they don't uh, if they don't move forward after this. Whereas Cork, Cork of Cork will already take an enormous amount from from what they've got over the season, you know. Yeah, and I think uh, from what I hear, Luke Fahey is in big trouble, and I think yeah, he'd be a 50, 50, I, think, 50, yeah. I think he'd be a massive loss because I think he's a very underrated addition to the team over the last couple of years. But obviously, look, Davy, we won't dwell on it too much because uh, look, a one point defeat in the championship is a tough one to take. But w- your impression of Cork last weekend, because obviously you saw them up close and personal. Yeah, they're a good side, very, very well drilled side, very structured side, which is probably a new thing for, for Cork teams. And they really stick to it. In fairness, you can see Kevin Watch's print all over them. Uh, and, and, and in fairness, when we were doing our analysis, getting ready for them, you know, it, 
it's fairly obvious what they do, but they're, they're quite good at it, you know. So, uh, so yeah, I, I'd be very, very impressed by them. I think they've serious, serious pace all over the field now, like real, real top pace. And we couldn't get the grips of Matty Taylor at all last week. I thought he was exceptional. Uh, I thought he was absolutely brilliant last week. And obviously Sherlock's a handful inside for anyone. Rory Dean's a handful. I think even even Killian O'Hanlon and Brian O'Driscoll, people probably underestimate them as footballers. They're quite good players too. I think O'Driscoll caused us the world of problem as well. So across the field, and I think that five that are starting six backs four against us last week, or definitely four of them anyway did. So uh, they have definitely threats. Whereas if people hone in on Sherlock too much, they can't hurt you other, other ways. And I think Brian McGuire now has kicked four points maybe in two games or, or something along those lines. So uh, they've threats all over the field. And, this game with Derry, I'm not sure it's as cut and dried as everyone thinks it is. Um, um, you know, Derry have struggled a little bit in Crow Park. You know, you know, again, do they kick the ball enough to win in Crow Park? I'm not sure. You know, if you want to run the ball in Crow Park all day long, I think it's a struggle for any team. Uh, you know, I think if you look at the teams that generally go up there and win the All-Ireland, they, they have a mixture of both games. They can kick the ball long, they can kick the ball short, they can run the ball. And um, I, I haven't seen a huge amount of that from Derry today. Now, maybe they have it in the locker and maybe it's not shown it yet. But uh, I, I think they're, and again, Cork aren't a huge kick passing team either. So I, I do think this is a, two very similar teams going at it. Um, and it's going to be a case of this is the question, I, I, none of us know the answer to that. Is Cork's momentum going to outdo Derry's freshness? That's, that's, that's who, who, where's the benefit there? I, oh, I, none of us know the answer to that. Um, but I, that Cork team would take beating. We, we would have had them nearly half dead and buried in the first half. And, uh, they, you know, in fairness, in a five-minute period, four and a half time, they, yeah. they go right back into the game. Yeah, it was 7-3. It was, you're dead right. Um, but back-to-back -back Ulster champions, you know, they were in a semi. They were in a semi-final last year, Desi. Um, I, I, if you were, I suppose, assessing Derry, yeah. argu arguably the better goalkeeper, do Cork have a man marker of the quality of Chris, Chrissy McCaig? Probably not. Is Cork's midfield as good as Glass or Rogers? Maybe not. Do Cork have a quality forward in the shape of Shane McGuigan at that at that level? Possibly not. On all known knowns, Derry should be winning this. Was that how you would see it? Um, no, I think Davy's made a good point uh, in so far. Davy like, mentioned underestimate. That was a word that was mentioned there. Is that is that yeah. is that is that something that could? No, but like. What Davy talks about is like when you're going into Crow Park, you need a certain type of game. Like it's and to, to, that that game needs to get the running style or the running game that they're going. It's translated around the country, which is fine. But when they go into Crow Park, it's the like you, you see Dublin kicking a lot more, you see Kerry kicking a lot more, and the reason they're kicking a lot more is it's energy conservation because it's very difficult for you to go to Crow Park, win the big matches because generally they're big matches in Croker, and have a game that you're going to be running for 75 minutes. It's physically impossible because the intensity and the running that they bring to the game will inevitably mean that the last 20 minutes they're going to be maxed out, like they're going to be struggling so they have to unload the bench. But the, the, where, where the top teams get a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a break is the variety in their play, whereas they're just relentless knocking on the door with the running style of play. So it's a, it's a valid point. And it's actually funny, Dave, you were saying about Cork and four or five defenders. Said, where has football gone wrong when cornerbacks and wing backs are coming up kicking points? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, 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 corner you know, forwards the you know, thing. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. You start off training and you're like, lads, go behind the ball, go behind the goals and kick it back yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, nowadays, yeah. nowadays, everyone's doing the shooting back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, the other point I'm just going to make is uh, Shane McGuigan has got two goals and 42 points. The next high score is Cassidy at 110, and then you're down to Brendan Rogers, who's 1 6. They fall off a cliff after Shane McGuigan. You, you talk about Cork, have their man marker with the ability to stop a Shane McGuigan, but certainly teams do. And you take that armory out of a team, you need you need a couple of forwards coming in, more forwards. You need every team that's won All Ireland has at least two A rated forwards. So you know that, like, and that's the question have Derry got the second to push on to win? That's what we're talking. Like, I think, like, I think that's so, like, I mean, you mentioned there, Rory, about, you know, Derry's best players, right, are probably better than Cork's best players, okay? But it's the level, it's the next level, I think, is where Cork come up. I think Cork, I mean, if I think if you put, if you listed the, the 15s and kind of just trying to start, start to rate them, 
I'd say there's going to be very little. Be difference. careful now, Mikey. Rory's getting excited. I'm here. Here. No, I know. I know. I'm. I'm. I'm being. He's listen. suffered for a while. I know. I know. Again, too. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. I don't want to go too far with this thought. No, I tell you, stop me. Stop me. Stop me now. When I'm going too far. I, I, I will say this though. Is it like we're underplaying Daniel O'Mahony is a top class defender. Lads. He's a young. Yeah. He's a young guy, but he is coming. Like 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 people don't see my my issue. G is we don't know Daniel O'Mahony, so he can't be any good. That's the you know that kind of way, like. Well, Brilliant defender now. Is he experienced yet? Probably not, but he will get there. And their midfield, like Ian McGuire and uh, Colin McCallaghan, no yeah. slouches at all. Like, I, I think we're very quick to underplay teams. You know, but if, if it was Ross Common in the same boat, it'd be our oh, dairy hot favourites. If it's if it's Cork, our oh, dairy hot favourite, I go out and do it. Like, you know, that kind of way, go out and eat the glue and repeat it. And, and this is just to counter your point, um, uh, Mick, about uh, Durham Bonus Terry. Is this the third quarter final in a row? Well, that's a fair, yeah, yeah. yeah that occurred like, to me this morning, actually. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, yeah. bonus territory, lads. If, yeah, if you're all, yeah, if you're yeah. the third quarter final in a row, my eye, like get into a semi final. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one thing, the one, the one thing about that is that I suppose there's been so much churn in the Cork team and in Cork management that it'll feel like a first quarter final mm-hmm. for the team. But the point is well made. They have been getting to the last eight generally. I think the one thing on that kind of just on the individuals, and it, this doesn't mean they're going to win the game, but it's. Cork have always had a lot of good individual footballers. That's never been a problem. And when you talk about man markers, I don't know how many times I've gone to games and we're looking at the Cork back six and you're going, yeah, he did very well on Clifford as a minor. Yeah, he did very well on, on another fellow, Sean Shea as a minor. For, these guys have been, like Dan O'Mahony uh, was, was, did very well on David Clifford. Now, when they met at senior level the last day, Clifford scored 1-4, I think. But I mean, if you were to say, and one of them was a penalty, if you were to say, give him three or four points and play, you know, Okay. Yeah, at that level, uh, you need to. Allow. All right, that's okay. So that's Dan O'Mahony, right? First day out against, and he wouldn't have even been the first choice marker for Clifford if Sean Meehan had been fit. So you, you're right. Like there are players, there are good individual players. What they have now is that structure. And I'd say, for, I'd say Kevin Walsh is living his best life at the moment because he doesn't have the hard sell that he may have had in Galway to to play this kind of defensive structure, this kind of contain and counter kind of game. Cork lads would be eating this up. They they will do whatever he says, and it's clear, it's very very clear what they're at, what they're at, and what they're about. But you know, when you do something very well, you know, it makes it very hard to break down. So it'll be a massive, it's a massive test now for Derry. Uh, I do, I something at the back of my head says there, you know, there will be a level of underestimation of Cork in this game again. Doesn't mean it's going to get Cork over the line by any means, but I think it's going, it's going to be a ferociously close game. One point. I- before I finish on this point is is Sean Powder plays a very deep line sweeper role you've seen against Aidan O'Shea particularly right to a couple of weeks ago there he's very deep so he literally he'll sit just in front of the six yard box or whatever you want to call it and and he sits there and you see Jordan Flynn kick four from play there just from around the D so they 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 they, they vacate a lot of space around the D if if they're going to be that defensive against and say O'Mahony and, and Powder plus one on, on the Wigan right I'd be afraid Eaton Doherty and Paul Cassidy and these boys will run amok in and around the D shooting because in fairness to Derry while they do fall off a cliff after McGuigan, they're still accurate enough footballers and they don't take that many shots, but they will be given the space to shoot in and around the D. And 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 I think we got a good bit of opportunity there last weekend as well. So I just think their position to Sean Powder is absolutely crucial here. Do they just go after McGuigan? If they do that, I think they'll get hurt the other side. But then again, if you leave a young buck on McGuigan, you'll get hurt there too. So uh, that'd be my head if I was if I was in the dressing room right now. How do you counter McGuigan? Is obviously as I said, that's what, that's what the plan is, and I just think if they're very, very, if Powder's very tight to McGuigan, he's going to give up an awful lot of space in and around the D. Yeah, there you have to play. Rogers will kick, Glass will kick, Doherty will kick, Cassie will kick. You know, that kind of seems to be careful there. No, that's true, uh, but we're looking forward to it nonetheless. Lower Cusack section three hundred one. I will have the war paint on the house foot. The house foot sign has gone up, Mick. Oh, we are looking forward to this one in a big way. And we will have to bring the sandwiches because it's going to be a long day, extra time and penalties. <laughs> and we will be staying in for the second game, which again, I mean, look, is there a bigger fixture in Gaelic football outside of Dublin Kerry than Dublin Mayo, Des? No, nah, no, this is this is box office. This is what it's all about. Um, if the draw has been great, in fairness, great. them games, you couldn't yes, have... If you, to, if you were to pick out the teams that you'd want to match up, the draw has literally done that. Yeah. They're played to Darren. The boys <laughs> I was in on the draw, actually. I was in oh, on the yeah. draw. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in terms of luck, you've Kevin Max stay there and his entourage, backroom team, and the hype machine is starting to get going again. And in fairness, like Mayo have been such good value for the last 20 years in terms of that championship. And in, in the, 
they, they brought such a level of intensity. And the one team that everybody was raving about was Dublin, the greatest team of all time. But net to be fair, like Mayo were very close second for a lot of that time as well. They were absolutely phenomenal. Um, and I, uh, like you do have to say that in terms of the running game, the power, the athleticism, like Mayo are a match of Dublin in all them departments. And that's that's what worries Dublin as well. And let's be fair, Dublin uh, aren't aren't the team that they were. And there is opportunities for Mayo. And there'll never be a better opportunity, I suppose, for Mayo to take Dublin than this weekend and to push on and kick on for that final. Um, when Kevin Kevin would have, Kevin would McStay would have taken on the job, Davey, Dublin in Croke Park in a knockout championship match is surely the thing that would have excited him the most. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and there's nothing that'll get them Mayo boys going. I don't think more than Dublin and that. It, it, that like they've had a tough couple of weeks again, and, and well, Dublin probably haven't. So that's obviously going to play a factor. But I'd say them Mayo boys are licking their lips. Like and went to Salt Hill and knocked out probably the other crowd last weekend, probably delighted with themselves. And now they're coming up to Crow Park to hopefully do the same to Dublin. I, I, I would say uh, oh, I'd be a very, very exciting, vibrant um, campaign this week. It's very hard to get a read on Dublin, isn't it, Michael? Oh, yeah. Like same as Kerry, because it's it's just you're just ah oh, you're just not sure where they're at. But I mean, mm-hmm. the, the, if anyone has a if there's any read on them, it's that they're not going very well. That we're either looking at a team just rolling to a stop, or else again a bit like Kerry Tyrone, they're going to get an enormous bounce out of a victory this weekend, and off they go. I mean, the one thing that that struck me this week, just looking at 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 um, their selections, is Fenton and James McCarthy at midfield. Like, that's that's there in case of emergency break glass midfield pairing that only comes out. Leinster finals are big all early quarter finals is when they put them together. Or in the case in the case of something, I mean 2019 they went into the drawing for the five in a row. They didn't start a midfield in the drawing game, but they certainly had them together for the replay. It's that kind of thing. This is the first year that they've had Fenton and McCarthy together for the whole championship season since 2017. So that says to me that there's just there's no margin for error here like they're, they're whatever they're what, whatever they have out it's what they got and they're not it's you know i don't think it's a case of pacing themselves around like that i'd say they're they're looking for form they're looking for something to click um but i mean again no better game than this i mean i'd say both of them were happy enough for this to come out and particularly from a male perspective you're looking going if you want dublin it's now you know it's it's now you want them because they're going to be a different beast if they win this one um, whether they can whether they can get it over the line or not. I was on Salt Hill last weekend, and I mean, just as a classic Galway Mayo match, it it ticked all the boxes. Whatever about spectacle or whatever, I think sometimes, you know, we get this perception, particularly if, if we're not from the place, of what a rivalry is like. But Galway Mayo is raw, like, and it was very raw last week, and it was physical and very physical, and there was an element of. I don't want to say hate is too strong a word, but there was a real, there was a bit of sulfur in the air, you know, and there has been a bit of sulfur in the air since from a Galway perspective, having lost. And for Mayo, they're just like, I, I, what I'm saying is I wonder, I know it's a, it's, it'll be, it sounds like a ridiculous thing to say, but last weekend was an enormous game for Mayo. And this weekend is a big game as well, but there is a, it's not going to make a difference on the day, but it just, if they had lost last weekend, the season would have been, been seen in a very different way than if they were to lose this weekend. I'm not saying that's going to make a difference next weekend, but it's just that emotional drive that was there last week. It's going to be hard to pick it up, I would say, seven days later again, even though it's Dublin in Crow Park and everything, you know? And and a Dublin, Desi, that has the band back together. We've seen the return of Jack McCaffrey and we've seen the return of the goalkeeper. And But I think the biggest plus, I suppose, from this time last year because we we saw Conor Callaghan in the Leinster final uh, against Kildare, and we didn't see him again after that. Obviously, it, it was a, it was a very serious injury. He's there this time round, and he's absolutely essential to Dublin's ambitions. I would suggest. Yeah, absolutely. But I suppose it, it, it's where the key question lies is that like you have Brian Fenton, you have James McCarthy, Paul Mannion, and Kieran Kilkenny, and their form hasn't been unbelievable this year, and. It's it's not that they can't do it. It's that I say mentally it's very difficult for them players to be at the level all of the time for year after year after year. I just look at James McCarthy. He just looks a little bit tired of it all. Like, and it's fair enough. Like, but obviously then you have Jack. I don't know how his hamstring is. Is he back available? Supposedly, but you, okay. you just never know. 
So like Pretty I suppose. Cool. Yeah, so like I suppose his um power, his explosiveness is the problem with hamstrings anyway. Um, but the thing about it is like if the, the the focal point being Conor Callan kind of joins all the dots together for them boys. And the focus of Mayo coming to town and the focus of being in Crow Park and it's pure knockout now. For all of them reasons, then you start swinging in Dublin's favor in terms of um durability. Then the like you, you've got this key target man in Con. But also Colin Basquell has done well for him this year. There's Bugler as well. And then I, I just feel like when it comes into the crunch and you need big players, the boys will be a lot more focused that I mentioned there this weekend. Going up to play them in championship in the first round, Davey. Obviously, you got to draw not too many teams, get a result against Dublin in the championship in Croke Park. It doesn't happen that often. What was your assessment going into assessment of them going into that game? So going into that particular game, we were aware that Jack McCaffrey was going to be a big doubt and that Owen Merchant was out. And for me, when you take them two guys out of the team, they become a completely different team because then back to the carry point earlier, they, they, they lack a good bit of pace and that, that, that punch runners, drive runners. And, you know, them two boys have struggled for fitness all year between hamstrings and I think Merchant might have had a foot injury or something along those lines. So, you know, without them two guys, they, they're a different animal altogether for me. They're not the same team at all, but with them now, they're, 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 yeah, they're as good as there is. But without them, and I, I don't know, I don't know the status on either of them guys this weekend. I think Merchant was back the last day, wasn't he? So, um, um, you know, I'm sure if they're fit and ready to play, Dublin will be awesome. But I do think Dublin need that level of athleticism, that level of pace against this Mayo team because, uh, you know, you've seen when you go man-to-man -man on this Mayo team in Killarney, you've seen what happens if, if you're not uh, fully, fully ripe. So uh, I would have concerns if Dublin don't have everybody on the field from Merchant right the way over to Bill McCaffrey and all the way on, I, I just think um, that they'll struggle against Mayo. But but if they do, I think they, they'll have too much for them. But it definitely will come down to team selection who's available for Dublin. You know? the, one of the big things from their point of view, Mick, will be um, obviously, like, you know, the, you, you have a, a, a range of scorers, but like in terms of their forwards, Conor Callaghan being chief among them. But what would you say would be their, what will Desi pick as a starting full forward line? Oh, my God. Uh, like Con, obviously. I, you in can't. Full, will, will, will Dean Rock start? Well, he hasn't been. No, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. Costlo. Yeah. yeah. Cost and who, but, but then who takes the freeze then? Costello will take them, and and that's that's been an issue for them, hasn't it? Yeah. Just because he's probably yeah, yeah. I, but I, he's I not he's not as reliable as Dean Rock. I would is that would that be fair, Davy? Is he is he probably he's probably as reliable as the current Dean. Dean just doesn't seem to be himself at the minute. Just from mm. I I've no insight into it. I don't know anymore on it. But I just don't think he's um as uh, he was what was he nine out of ten or whatever maybe more in previous years. I'm just not sure he's operating at the same level right now. So I'd say Costello is probably a seven and a half or eight out of ten. I'd say that they're going to go with. I'd say. Yeah, I'd say they're glad that Basquell has come through because he was a he was a type of player that you'd look at from a Dublin perspective and. You'd be thinking they need they need the likes of him to come through, but it has been slow enough dropping. Uh, but he's he's coming now. You know? In fairness to him, he has he was always there and he was always yeah. doing well for Bally Bowden. He just yeah. wasn't able to get into that unit of six, like because they're so yeah. strong. So the opportunities have presented themselves in Dublin. I suppose Cormac Costello is a more regular player. Colin Vesquel is getting more time, and that just shows you that Dublin are coming back down a little. Coming back down, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, it'll be tight. It'll it'll, it'll be. It'll be very tight for them. And I mean, there'll be no, like, this is the beauty of this thing. Like, in fairness, I don't know whether it's the look of the draw or whether it's the system. But like the lads have said, like, we have been, and the previous round was the same. We've been delivered the matches. They're perfect. They're absolutely perfect. And the, the thing about this set of quarterfinals is that for all the teams that are going in, and this has not been the case every year for all the teams going into quarterfinals, they can't be any less than 100%. Regardless of how, they're at, how they are, personnel-wise and all the rest of it, they have to put out best possible team, 100%. There's no margin for error whatsoever, which has not always been the case at All-Ireland quarterfinal stage, especially for the best teams. But for the best teams this weekend, they have to bring it. And that's, again, other years coming into like, an All-Ireland quarterfinal, you could have looked at Dublin and gone, they may not have got a, a, a team of the calibre of Mayo, and they could have gone, yeah, we'll see how they are, and they'll, they'll work it out, we'll, but we'll really know in the semi-final, not the case this year. So yeah, which, that's... Which... 
That's, 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 that's credited to the draw, is that? The it case? is. Yeah, yeah. The draw. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. Is it the system has worked? Yeah. Are we saying the it, system has worked, you know? So, like, it, it, the quality teams are there, like, so there, there's no yeah. one there. There's no Deadwood in that quarter final. Like, you're not looking mm -hmm. at any predictor team going, oh, they're not going to give it a right rattle. Like, everyone's fancying their chances at this stage. And, like, obviously, um, the games then have lent itself. They're, they're massive matches coming into this weekend. And if you were to replace, but if you were to replace them, Desi, with Galway, Roscommon, or Kildare, yeah. you know, you, 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 none of them would be going in as Deadwood either, in my no, opinion. No, you know that kind no. of way, like yeah. so. So it, it, we we have a brilliant system, and all I know, you boys were giving out for a long time about the football this year. I never bought into it at all. <laughs> to be honest with you, I never bought into it. At all. I thought we had brilliant structure, just because maybe you don't like Dublin being rattled and you don't like any of that happening. You know that kind of way that uh, I, I never bought into it. Pick it to them, Davy. It's the time for yeah. the managers to have a comeback yeah. at the Yeah, way. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here we go, yeah. We're free reign now, Davy. <laughs> So it's the media and the Ulster teams you've got so far. Well, the media, the, the media are sitting here ready to bite back like so. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Go on, yeah. Ellie. Oh, yeah. You don't big have boys. To, We're you, big boys. You, you, you don't have to sit up and stand You have all the answers, you boys. You have all yeah. the answers. Yeah, you don't have to sit up and stand and watch it. That's the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of sitting up and stand and watching it, are you going to the games this weekend, Desi, Davy? Oh, it to be honest, um, I I have four kids at home. Uh, the year has been absolutely mental. I'd love to go. I'd love to bring, but like, um, I'm just trying to reconnect with my family. To be honest, yeah, fair enough. Um, I'm actually looking forward maybe to going in. I'm gonna maybe get my dad over and watch the games with my dad, um, because I just think they're spec. They're brilliant matches. Like, and you want to watch a bit of a crowd, but um, I, I'm gonna look forward to sitting on the couch actually, because and Davey will tell you. It's actually I don't I don't know how Davy did it. Like he's a county manager for a few years. He's a young man as well. I, I'm in awe of Davy now because it's so <laughs> intense that bubble of intercounty football, um, and being the manager and being the person that everyone goes to, um, the media, the people, your entourage, your team of people, your players, it's just so full on. Um, so I'm looking forward just to sitting on the couch and enjoying the matches. Davy. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure I'll be there. I'm not fully ready to be going at any football games, to be honest with you. Yet. I, my head isn't in it just at the minute. So um, uh, I don't think I'll be there. And again, I have a two and a half year old who I probably owe a few weeks of time to. So uh, I'd say that's probably where I'll, I'll have to put most of it. No, don't get me wrong. I'll watch the games and I'll have a look at them. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'll be there now. If I'm there, I'm there. But I, I, I'm not at this stage. No, I certainly will be there. And I uh, presume you're going to be there, Mick. Oh yeah, I have four yeah. kids at home. I'm getting the hell out of here on Saturday. You won't see me on Sunday night. Good luck, lads. See you later. Oh, listen. I work. I work. In, I work on Saturday. Work on Saturday, and uh, I'll be taking notes on Sunday. Yeah. So yeah. there. Uh, listen, looking forward to it. There should be four fantastic games across the two days, and really look forward to it. We'll be back again uh, next Monday to review it all. Hopefully, you know. Great football played across two weekends. Just want to say thanks to Desi and Davey for the time and thanks to Michael for nice the time. It was great, great lads. crack, lads. Thanks very much. And we'll see you again shortly. Oh, he's got, there's the whistle. It's over. It's over.